here I am at a park. It's primarily for tennis. It's got 25 nice courts. It's got this backboard. Uh, that building is uh, for racquetball courts. On the other side is the entrance to the racquetball courts. But on this side, it serves as a wall for uh, tennis players to hit some against the wall uh, to warm up or to fine-tune their strokes and to exercise. So I've been doing that, hitting against the wall. And now I'm still at the park. And uh, I also wanted to uh, take a few minutes to decide on what kind of painting should I do. I'm working, well, I put it on hold, uh, a Buddha, a painting of a Buddha in the Tibetan Tanka style of painting. This is an actual Tibetan uh, painting a mandala, I suppose, using perhaps authentic pigments, but I will use uh, uh, pigments that I have. Mm, they're commercial pigments. I like liquid text acrylics. Uh, so I have, I was working on a painting, uh, wow, it's been maybe 15 years or more that I've been working on it. And uh, I think I used uh, this this um, grid, grid chart, trying to get the proportions right. I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't have the lines anymore. I, I've got it uh, filled out with paint but now I gotta uh, put the details like the eyes, the mouth, the ears, the details of the hand, the bowl. Yeah I was thinking of doing a medicine Buddha but maybe it's easier to do a regular Buddha like this with his hands touching. Well I have to see if, if the hands are touching the ground then if they are then I do have to do this kind of Buddha. Mm. And the decorations, Oof, I don't know about that. And the lotus petals around them. So, uh, yeah. Another one that I would like to do is maybe the goddess Tara. Hmm. to put on the, the hood of the car but maybe not because it would be too much detail and I've never painted on a car so I'm trying to figure out what kind of paints should I use uh, oils acrylics or enamel I never painted using enamel hmm well, I was wondering if I could get away with painting it in acrylics and then spraying it with an, an enamel to preserve it. Hmm. Well, I could do that and then see how well it stays. So, yeah, this book is uh, its pretty interesting. Uh... <sighs> hmm. Hmm. It's it's got a lot of information. It says that Tibetan tanka painting is one of the great arts of Asia. It is rich not only in its iconography, religious content, and stylistic development, but also in terms of the materials and skills that the painters and their patrons lavished upon it. Anyone examining even a small number of these fine old scroll paintings, which is known as Tangka, T-H-A-N-G-K-A, cannot help 
being impressed by the exquisite materials and consummate skill that went into their creation. Just what these materials were and how they were applied were questions that attracted our interest years ago. When as college students we first came into contact with Tibetan art. But when we tried to learn more we could not get very far because the subject had not then been studied in much detail by Westerners. Therefore we decided to get go closer to the source and to learn what we could from the living painters of Tibet. So the, uh, these authors, David and Janice Jackson, went to find these uh, living painters of Tibet. So they found uh, this list uh, in alphabetical order. Dorje from Amdo Rekong, Dorje Drakpa and his monk brother from Kam Ling Shang, Dorje Gyatsen from Western Tsang, Gongpo from Kihirong, Jampa from Lhasa, Hasa, Jamyang from Amdo, Kunsang Topye from Bhutan, Leg Druk Yatso from Pienyo Nalendra, Dodem from the borderlands of Amdo, Lo Sang Kidrup from Mongolia, Pema Kanchak from 